Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I want to show you how I forage for one of my favorite ingredients for tea, the elderflower. Now you find them everywhere in the UK, in hedgerows, in woodlands, and I want to show you how to identify it, how to pick it, and how you can make it into a beautiful tasting tea. Let's get started. The flowers come from the elder tree. I'm going into the woods because it's important when foraging that you find ingredients as clean and pollution-free as possible. Foraging for tea ingredients can be great fun, but it's important that you identify the plant correctly. This is hogweed and it looks so similar to elderflower if you don't know what you're looking for. Here are some simple rules you can follow so you make sure you pick the right plant. Elderflowers grow in clusters called umbels, made up of many tiny creamy white flowers. They have leaflets, usually five to seven, arranged opposite each other along the stem. They look so much like hogweed. Hogweed also has flowers that look so similar, but the leaves are different and the plant is a single tall erect herbaceous plant rather than a bushy shrub like the elderflower. And even though the flowers are similar, the clusters of the elderflower are larger and more spread out. Hogweed leaves are also larger and they look like giant parsley leaves. But don't be afraid to forage. Always take some gloves, scissors, a basket and consult your guidebook if you're not sure because picking ingredients to make tea is so satisfying and fun. So this behind me is the elder tree. We have found it and you can see clusters of white flowers, almost like little clouds. So let's go pick some. Okay, so in the UK, elder flowers come into season round about end of May and early June. Admittedly, this is sort of a bit late in the season. The weather has been a bit crazy, but we do what we can. So there are still quite a lot of nice clusters here on this tree. And when you forage for anything, it's always important to make sure that you leave some flowers for the leaves to develop berries and make sure that, you know, the tree remains healthy. So when you're picking elderflowers, this is the cluster you want to collect where the flowers are nice and open and it's evenly all white. Unlike, for instance, when the flower starts to dry up, fall off, and the beginnings of the berries start to appear. The berries, when they form um, a little bit more, tends to look like this. And this is also going to be beautiful to pick later in the season. But these are when they make the best tea blends. And this is how you pick them. So I take a scissors and just cut the stem from here. I have my little basket. It's always best to place them in a basket as opposed to in a plastic bag so they don't crush or sweat. So a nice airy basket like this is great. And try to pick less than 70% of the flowers that you find again to make sure that you respect nature and its ability to regenerate. But this is so fun, I absolutely love it. And the smell is just amazing. So let's see how much we can get from this tree. And oh, it helps to be, helps to be a bit taller. <laughs> oh well. Elder trees can grow up to 15 meters and this one was a mature tree. But often you will find younger shrubs that is within easy reach. And it's a great fun activity for the whole family. The lengths I will go through to make tea. So this is my haul for today. Dried, this should get me one batch of green tea, about 100 to 200 grams of green tea. Let's see, after they dry, how much I get because you still have to sort the leaves. But this should be enough for one beautiful batch. Elder flowers have a delicate floral scent which is not overpowering and it has a subtle honey-like sweetness with a faint earthy undertone. 
first, we need to prepare our elderflowers for drying. Gently shake the flower heads to remove any insects and you can give them a light rinse but make sure to dry them thoroughly with a paper towel to prevent mold during the drying process. Next, spread the flowers out on a clean cloth or paper towel in a single layer. Remove any large stems as we only want the delicate flavours from the flower for our tea. After carefully separating the leaves from the stem, I'm placing them in a nylon bag and allowing them to dry for about 5-7 to seven days. It looks a lot right now but the flowers will wither down to about half this size when it's properly dried. There are several methods to dry elderflowers. The easiest way is to air dry them. Simply place the flowers in a warm dry place out of direct sunlight. I'm placing this bag in my dark cool pantry. I find drying them away from sunlight helps them retain their colour. Once your elderflowers are completely dry, store them in an airtight container away from direct sunlight. A glass jar with a tight-fitting lid works perfectly. Properly stored, dried elderflowers can last up to a year. Now you'll know when they're ready, when the flowers are crispy and they crumble easily between your fingers. Now that we have our dried elderflowers, it's time to make some tea. To make elderflower tea, you'll need about 1-2 to two teaspoons of dried elderflowers per cup of boiling water and place the dried flowers in a teapot or infuser. Pour boiling water over the flowers and let it steep for about 10-15 to 15 minutes. Once it's done steeping, strain the tea into your cup and enjoy. You can even add honey or lemon for extra flavour if you like but I add a teaspoon to my favourite green sencha for that complimentary floral note. Mm, this elderflower tea is fragrant, soothing and perfect for any time of the day. Drying elderflowers and making tea out of what you've foraged is a great way to preserve the essence of spring and enjoy its benefits all year round. Thanks for joining me today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that bell icon for more tea tips and tea blending recipes. See you next time on Bernie Sips. Take care and happy sipping.